Hi, I'm Dominic with Good Health, and I'm here with Dahlia. I'm Dr. Dahlia Rothstein. I'm a neurologist. I work at St. Michael's Hospital in Toronto in Canada that's affiliated with the University of Toronto. Dahlia, two quick questions. The first one, if I turned up with a patient and I'd just been diagnosed and said, what are the drugs available? You know there's high efficacy and not so high efficacy therapies. What are the advantages and disadvantages of both? Very lucky today in MS that we have a vast array of therapies to choose from. And we have certain drugs which are called high efficacy therapies. And essentially, the advantages of high efficacy therapies are that they really suppress the relapses. So, most of them suppress relapses by around 70%. They can suppress new lesions. So, the um, things like Ocrevus and Tysabri, and that's what you mean. If, if a patient yeah. sitting in front of their neurologist like you, the Ocrevus Tysabri uh, uh, symptom, what else? Yeah, they, they might be also. Lemtrado, okay. Those would be considered our really high efficacy therapies. Uh, so especially when a, somebody has more active MS, we usually offer those drugs up front. And even in other situations where people may have a high burden of disease on MRI, I think it's important to put those drugs on the table. They do have some potential serious adverse events that I think it's important for people to understand, which are potential disadvantages. So most of them do suppress the immune system in a more profound way than our other MS therapies, which can make people a little more vulnerable to infection. So I think it's really important for people to understand you know, what they're getting into. But yes, they can be very, very successful at really eliminating disease activity in MS. So high reward comes with higher risk, essentially. Exactly. Okay. Um, and the second question, because I know you're super busy today. How would you see things evolving in 10 years? Because to me, I started before there were drugs. I started. I got diagnosed before there were drugs. And I've seen this incredible speed of drugs and appearing. How do you see it in 10 years' time? That's a great question. I mean, it's been hugely rewarding to be in MS. We've seen tremendous progress over the last 10 years. Yeah. We've seen an expansion in the number of therapies we have available, and we can really tailor the therapy to the individual person. But there's still a large unmet need in MS uh, for disability progression, which is sort of a slow accumulation of disability that can happen often after many years of MS. The drugs we have currently don't work particularly well on that endpoint, but there are new drugs in development that are looking like they may help uh, prevent disability progression to a greater extent, and we're very excited about that. If I'm a patient today and I'm saying to you, doctor, when's, when's this better stuff coming? Is it five years, 10 years, 20? I don't know. Well, there's a new class of medications being studied called BTK inhibitors, and the early data suggests that they may have some benefits for disability progression. Right now, they're in phase three clinical trials, so we're expecting those trials to read out in about one to two years, and then it can be another year or two until they come to market. So I think, you know, more than two years, but fewer than four. Okay, um, all right. So that is probably, that's well, something exciting in, off, but yeah. in the pipeline. And also, you know, there is a lot of energy right now about Epstein virus and if we might be able to develop therapies against uh, EBV that could help with MS someday too. So there's there's a lot of research. Dalia, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. And enjoy actions. I'm just overwhelmed at how much there is. Yeah, so. yeah me yeah. too. It's so <laughs> exciting to be here with everybody in person again. That's cool. Thanks a lot. Lived Health will be bringing you on the day highlights from Europe's biggest annual MS conference, Actrims 2022. Make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on the latest updates in MS treatment from across the globe.